Hey there. Hey there. Um, so I don't know if there was anything planned for this call because I just got my power back on this morning. Oh. Um, so. I was going to say, I'm surprised you're on the call. <laughs> yeah, well, I just, I saw that Catherine couldn't make it. And so I was, uh, Carolyn couldn't make it. So I thought I should dial in just in case. Um, the, um, uh, did you, you all have Texas? No, no, no Portland. Oh, Portland. If I was based in Texas. My power would still not be back on. Well, it depends. Some people were lucky, like my bosses in Texas, Austin, and he, he, he is one of the lucky ones who did have it. So it's like, but yeah, crazy, crazy what's going on. The, um, so yeah. Um, so I haven't even looked at the agenda, if any. I just posted the date and I, there wasn't anything in here. Okay. So. I think I have only maybe um, something regarding the framework next steps. So I'll, I'll just gonna add it here. Let's do it right. Um, framework. Yes. Uh, so I've been working on. I don't know if it's the right word, but I've been calling it the contributor growth framework, kind of a high level framework of what to think of if you want to grow your contributor base, be it code contributors or non-con contributors. And um, so I interviewed a few people. Um, Scott uh, from Microsoft came on the call and he wanted to help. So he um, um, interviewed someone as well. and. We're gonna uh, actually meet right after this call. So I think this is ready to go on GitHub. Um, yeah, and then get feedback kind of stuff. So that's basically where we are at. And I can add, maybe I'll just add this in here. Do we know if these are like the things to get approved by our, I guess our TOC chair people? Mm -hmm. Like, so like for the templates, I think Paris was going to our chair um, or our TOC rep to like get the documents approved. Do we need to do oh, that? I thought you kind of submitted and then they go, the approval goes through there. But so they would approve the work doc because I know that nothing goes through approval, not, nothing is published, but I thought like you kind of submitted and then, so what's the process? Because I, I thought when we were talking with Carolyn, it was like, okay, just get it on GitHub. I was like, okay. You know, it, it depends. There's an approval process for stuff to get on the contributor, contribute.cncf.io website. If it's not going onto the website, then there isn't an approval process. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping at some point it goes there, but I, yeah. I, I, it's not ready yet, right? Like first right. we want to put it somewhere and so we can ask people for um, feedback. Yeah. And um, yeah. Are you going to put it in the drafts folder then? Yeah, so I think so. So I was like, honestly, uh, I just learned how the basics of GitHub last week. <laughs> I had no idea how to read. So one of the reasons I had no idea when I joined this group, because I did not know how to read that page and where to find what, because it all has like the contribute. I was like, oh my God, that's why I like, that's why no one told me because the information is here. So I, <laughs> I just had these aha moment right now. And I was trying to find it. And then I went, I couldn't find it. And then I went through your draft thing. 
So I think that's where it should live, right? So those are kind of the little questions that I have. So I would just create a new file and that will create a, a, a folder, right? Because it, like, it's actually- Well, I'll create a new file, right? In the drafts folder. Oh, okay. Because I think right now, let me see. You are the only one, who, it's drafts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I see it, okay. This is experimentation for me, learning while doing. I know it's not difficult, but <laughs> it's uh, the first time it's kind of different. Um, yeah, so the process would be adding it in there, um, submitting it, submitting the PR, and then someone would review and see like if this is something shareable, I guess. And then once it is, uh, or is the draft always a draft? Um. I think the plan was to put it in drafts so like for us, the rest of the people in the SIG can take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times people just do like lazy consensus and say like, hey, like, you know, like look at this by, you know, the 25th and like if there aren't any other comments, like I'm gonna move forward with it. Um, and then from there, I'm not sure, I don't, I think if at that point you feel like it's good to go and like get approval, then we surface this to Paris, I believe. Okay. Well I, think, right. well, I think like the first step is just to get it on here. And then I think it, it's, it's by then we'll probably, well, I can ping um, people like, or Paris ask her what the, like once it's there, uh, but I guess like it would be like, let's wait until two weeks and then see what we do once it's in there. And because I think like maybe I can um, get some feedback from other people that we already know before. Yeah. And then we discuss in our next meeting. Yeah. Because we want to move forward. I like went through this and then right like then like Josh felt like there were other things to add. And so we kind of have we're still working on ours and we haven't gone back to Paris to get yeah. it approved. Yeah. So there may or may not be like more iterations to come, but you want to start putting it. Um, yeah. Oh there. yeah, I'm sure there will be iterations, and I'm hoping there will be iterations because. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We want this to be, to have as much, you know, input from as many people and projects as possible. So. I would be um, disappointed if there was no. Um. Yeah, I would drop a note to the file, like the GitHub link in the, um, Slack channel when we post it. Okay. Okay, cool. So that was the only thing that I was kind of hoping to get out of this meeting to understand the next steps. Um, so I took another look at the contributor ladder template and um, I think the only thing that's kind of glaring for me right now is just the difference or like how we want to describe a re reviewer versus approver right now. Um, I added, I mean, I just kind of put like a reviewer reviews pull request before they get merged by approvers. Um, I'm not totally well versed in the specifics of the different roles. So um, Josh, is that something you could look over? Yeah. Oh, you've added more stuff to it? Just a little. I, I cleaned it up oh, a little awesome. bit. But um, I don't know if we're missing anything else. Yeah, the um, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh, I really need to give these titles. Hold on. <laughs> no, that's not the right one. Do you want the link? No, I'm just having the usual. Oh, wait, it's one of your hack MDs. It's not one of mine, right? Yeah. Got it. OK, that's why. Um... Oh, I need to clean up for you. Okay. So we've got contributor, reviewer, approver, organization member. It's 
So project lead maintainer, various kinds of maintainer roles and activity. Yeah. I mean, we still need to bulk out some description Which ones? and requirements info. For? Um, oh, like for reviewer, for example. Yeah. Um, the um, So saying, how is this different from, you know, clarifying with both reviewer and approver how the two are different from each other for organizations that are going to use both and also probably with a comment I'll, I'll add this with a comment saying a lot of organizations don't use both a lot yeah. of organizations just use approver or just use reviewer and and um owner um sub project owner fine. so the um um so here's something that I didn't quite get. It says an approver approves pull requests before they're merged by maintainers, which is not how approvers work in most projects that I know of. And most projects that I know of, being an approver means when you approve something, it gets merged by the CI system. Um, if you're saying sometimes an approver is just an approver and not necessarily a maintainer, but sometimes they are also a maintainer. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the real distinction between approver and maintainer for projects that have both yeah. would be the scope of their responsibility, oh, right? Sure. So like, say, say, for example, in SIG contributor strategy, if I was an approver just in the governance folder, I could be an approver. But if I wasn't an approver on the root level thing, then I'm not a maintainer, if you follow me, because I'm not responsible for the SIG overall. Um, um, are approvers often leads? Um, you, well, leads are often approvers, if you follow me, <laughs> as okay. in you can be an approver without being a lead, um, but you can, um, you know, the, um, but most leads are going to be approvers. Should the case, the one, a few cases where a lead is not an approver is when they are a lead in the sort of social sense, right? When they're in oh, charge sure, of sure. say maintenance or contributor cultivation or something else that doesn't require them to have repo permissions. <laughs> okay, so lead is, or sorry, or an approver is more of like a, it's not necessarily like, well, it is sometimes a role, but mostly not a role. It's like a function, right? Okay. Um, yeah, well, no, we're thinking about approver role as sort of narrowly scoped maintainer. The, um, yeah. Well, cause so, so I, I asked the question about the lead portion being, um, or like, cause like you have the sub project lead section as well. Um, the, um, well, sub project leads. So sub project leads are for projects that are actually divided out into sub projects. Sure. Um, like for example, with um, uh, network tools, um, or what is it called? Network, network something working group. I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, they're they're a weird project where they have these individual tools, and the individual tools each have their own maintainers. Um, so sub project lead, sub project maintainer would also be a name that we could use um, if we if that was clearer to people. So, so like for all these things, for approver, subproject maintainer, maintainer, it's all, these are all ownership permissions. It just varies what the scope of their ownership permissions are. And then also with anybody who's got the title maintainer, there's this expectation that they have responsibilities to the project that go beyond just approving PRs. So, so does it make sense to just tuck those into, um, the other existing titles right now, as opposed to having their own categories? Yeah, well, I almost feel like we want to have a subtitle here where we say maintainer, and hey, here's a list of different kinds of maintainers that different projects have, and it really depends on how complex your project organization and code base is, you know? Um, because for a lot of projects I'm dealing with, Approver and maintainer are the same thing. There are no sub projects. You know, there's only one sort of level, right? Um, I mean, those projects generally have they have a contributor, you know, org member, and they have you know approver slash maintainer, and that's all they have. That's going to be true for a lot of projects. So okay, so right now on that doc, there's a maintainer section, and within that, 
there's a breakdown of like community manager, project manager, lease manager, docs manager. Yeah. Do you want to tuck sub project lead under there? Yeah. I mean, I guess the difference is um, for those, and actually this is just a matter of filling it out, right? Is that um, ideally we would have more example duties, requirements, et cetera, for all of these subcategories. Because we have we have sort of sub project owner more filled out, but yeah. that's just because we have it more filled out. It's not, and actually no, we don't have it more filled out because it still has a bunch of stuff in it that doesn't belong there. So, a lot of that stuff that's in it belongs under maintainer. Okay. But let me yeah, fix that right that. now, rather than than continually saying it. Okay. The um what did you move? I moved all the handling CNCF relations, et cetera, because that all belongs to uh maintainer or whatever the senior most position is. Got it. Okay. Um the um and I'll need to block that out because in some projects where they have a steering committee, all the CNCF relationships go to the steering committee. And which has some substantial overlap with who the maintainers are, but it's not the same body. So um, the um, I knew it was going to be complicated to do this sort of generic grab bag of roles. I'm almost thinking that we want to spin out a separate document that's an example of the sort of simplest contributor ladder. Okay. Where where we have contributor slash org member as the same role. Mm -hmm. um, uh, reviewer and then maintainer slash approver. So basically three levels. Like a light as, version. As an example, well. simplest one. Yeah. The, um, because, because this is otherwise going to be a little bit terrifying. <laughs> the, um, because um, even Kubernetes doesn't use all of these levels. Um, well, okay. Should I start doing that? Because I can probably yeah. start doing that, right? Yeah. And well, yeah. And we just need to remember to sync it with the sort of main grab bag. So here, hold on. I'm going to actually. Um, can I, oh, I'm already there. So I'm adding a header for maintainer roles and so that we can go into that. Yeah, and if we do that, put that in there. So I'm going to actually add a role here. So make it really clear because the maintainer roles particular area is a grab bag based on what your project looks like. And I'm going to add the approver maintainer role, you know, and then make it clear that no one is going to adopt all of these roles because some of them contradict each other. Um, Um, and then have in there the approver approver slash maintainer role, which is the simplest one for projects that just have one top level and they don't have subdivisions and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know what actually make this so I can see doing this two ways to help me figure out. Let's figure out which way is better. 
right? One way would be to have this one big file that has every role we can think of or have seen in any project in it as, as a menu for people to pick from. Um, the second one here is because the really complicated part appears to be the maintainer roles, you know, approver on up, that maybe in the basic file, we just include approver maintainer, you know, the simplest consolidated role. And then we have a link to a second file, um, you know, where we say, look, if your project needs sub project maintainers or maintainers with specifically scoped domains or, um, you know, a distinction between, um, you know, directory owners and maintainers, et cetera, um, see this other file for a set of roles that you might want. I'm kind of thinking that's going to be better than giving a super simple example. And we might want to give a super simple example also. But if you look at what's above that maintainer line, it's not very complicated. What's above that maintainer line is not very complicated. It's one, two, three. It's four roles with some notes saying that, you know, you might not have this role if. Yeah, I, I wonder if the message it as like if you're sandbox you use the light version of the template and then like as you start thinking and growing right then you like reference the other one to kind of plan out what you're going to do i don't know about that because it doesn't correspond to what we have sure because like the network working group is a sandbox project and they have sub project leads sure whereas etcd um has is a graduated project and they have a two level contributor ladder okay right you're a contributor or you're a maintainer and that's pretty much it okay um, so uh, i mean i think it's more dependent on on the sort of natural complexity of the project yeah i'm just wondering if we should make any statements in terms of helping people figure out which stuff they should use yeah Well, and that's why I was thinking it might actually, because if we take all of the sort of alternate, you know, extra maintainer stuff out of this one, like I said, we have, in that case, we would have five total levels of which um, community participant and reviewer often get dropped. Um, and why, why would we drop community participants just to make it shorter because people or? people often don't recognize who their participants are is that good or bad though it's not necessarily a good thing um the um but i mean there aren't uh, you know the only thing you have to do to become a participant is to make a post on a mailing list you know or a slack forum sure. or whatever somewhere right the um and so that's why people don't often think of those as a group it's helpful that people think of them, right? Because people are saying, how do we get contributors? And you say, okay, well, who do you have participating in your community forums? Yeah. Right? That's that's your first pool to draw from. Um, but people often do not call that out as a specific role in their contributor ladder. Um, I guess. I so I feel slightly inclined to include it just because it's kind of like this like the baseline, I guess, or like the starting point before you become a contributor, where if someone were, were to come upon a ladder, right? And they're like, oh wait, like, hey, a community participant, that's me. And then I guess I don't know. You <laughs> you share your opinion here. It's like I feel like if they like self-identify with something, then they can start seeing yeah. themselves move up it. Um yeah as opposed to just seeing like contributor. And I don't know if that's intimidating to read. Um, yeah. 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 The, um, yeah. I mean, it's good. It's good for projects. To, yeah, I guess we are making a recommendation because what is good for projects? The, um, but the one sort of drop, so I guess the one droppable one there in there is reviewers, right? Because a bunch of projects don't have a separate reviewer role um uh they just go kind of straight to approver 
yeah. if you're not a gen general contributor. Um, if you're not an organ, if you go above organization member. Um, alternately, some of them lump reviewer in with organization member. That is, organization members have reviewing rights. So, um, the um, and and just make it clear that that's sort of in there. I mean, in Kubernetes, we have those as separate levels because of Prow largely. And projects that use Prow tend to have those as separate levels because it's built into how Prow works. Um, but but most other projects don't. So yeah, so then we would have five levels of which one is optional for a sort of basic file. And then we have a big thing saying, hey, if your project is more complex because you have a large code base or you have sub projects or you have you know permissions on specific modules, maintainer permissions on specific modules, see this other file that covers some of the kinds of maintainer roles that people have as types of maintainers. And I think that'll make looking at the basic file less complicated for people. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um... Okay, wait, I'm just trying to understand the, the like order in which someone would read the section under the maintainer roles. So right now it says approver dash maintainer, and then you go into we'll explain like what right. So so for simple projects, right? <laughs> I'm gonna fill out a set of requirements under approver maintainer. And for simple yeah. projects, that's the only kind of maintainer or approver they have. Right? The minute that you get cited on that owner put into an owner's file as an owner somewhere, um, you are now a maintainer of the project in general, right? That's the one level they have, right? Yeah. And we put a big note there saying, hey, this is how a lot of simple projects, you know, simple in terms of code base projects do it. Um, if your project is structurally more complicated than this, um, please see this other file um, called contributor ladder dash maintainer types, something like that. Okay, I'm kind of confused again. So we're gonna have, are, are we having two files, one of which is like the light version and then the other one that is more complicated? Or are we having- uh, Yeah, either yeah. two files or we have a walled off section at the bottom of this file. Um, I kind of feel like having two files is a bit more readable just because among other things, the second file is a little bit different because yeah. with the maintainer types, we're saying, hey, here's like eight different maintainer types. Yeah. And not only are you not going to use all of them, you in fact can't use all of them because some of them contradict each other. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we should just have two as opposed to having one with like offshoots, like multiple yeah. offshoots. Okay. Um, you know, and then we'll also put the other things in the community manager and project manager and release manager, which are also other ways to divide things up. Yeah. Um, the um, so um, the um, um, and that also gives us the ability if we put it in a second file. Here's the advantage of putting a second file. We might not do that second file immediately <laughs> because it's a lot of extra stuff to write. Sure. And maybe we merge the first file and get that published and continue working on the second file so it doesn't hold this up. Yeah, just so you have something out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, um, the, um, I will okay. start a new note, new HackMD for the light version, and I'll share that with you. Yeah, okay. Wait, I thought this was the light version we were going to move the approver stuff, the all the crazy maintainer stuff to a new file. OK, so it's OK. Yeah, that's fine, too. We can do that. Because um, we, we have a whole lot of essential stuff in this version, like bouncing yeah. people for inactivity and, you know, the. Um, um, OK, so then should, should we keep the subsections that are currently under maintainer, like community manager, project manager, release manager, docs? Um, yeah, no, I think we'd move that to the new file. Okay, so I will create a new file. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, and I'll add a big note about, you know, the maintainer role grab bag and and why your why your project might need what's in the second file. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Actually, most of what we got with a prover is Oh, wait, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Okay, sorry, I'm messing with it. I'll, I'll take my hands off it. Okay. I really like the idea of breaking it up, by the way, because I think it, it, it gets overwhelming, especially for small projects. If they, and probably most people using this, they're small and then they will grow. And it will be like very, so I think like making it really kind of the bare, like this is like the simple version and then, hey, you're more advanced. I think that's a really good move. Um, or here are more, you know, like more for more mature projects or bigger projects or whatever. I think that's a really, because that was a little bit my fear at first. It's like when you see it, it's like, oh, wow, do I need all these roles? So really good point. Yep. Yeah, and, and most people don't, you know. I mean, I would say we would even skip the extra roles entirely, except that because of the projects we've dealt with, we know what some of these extra roles would look like. And, you know, it's still useful to give projects templates for things because otherwise they tend to attempt to write these from scratch and find out that it's really difficult. No, I do think you need, like, I think it yeah. It makes sense to have them all. Yeah. Also for smaller projects to to understand, like all oh, these are the role, and it, it it makes sense to understand how bigger projects work, or um, even if they don't need it yet, because that's maybe where they get at some point. Or so I think it does make sense to have a complete um, letter for sure. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and clean this up and I'll send this over hopefully this afternoon. I have a quick question. So I've been uh, slacking <laughs> Charles a little bit because I was like looking at starting to add like the first thing into um, GitHub. And because it's so long, I wanted to have like the introduction and then like the different sections with a little summary and then linking to a different page because it's just too long, you know, and you may be interested. It's that, again, it's overwhelming, right? So you may just read the section that you're interested in. Um, so what is the best thing? Because like um, Charles was saying, there is no way of doing sub pages. So should I create a folder in the, uh, in the um, draft folder? And uh, so I, don't know. I think you can do what I had done on mine where I made this like kind of like table of contents thing at the top. And I just link to those headers further down. Would mm -hmm. that work functionally for you? It would. I just feel sometimes if it's so long and it's ever ending, uh, uh, never ending scrolling, yeah. finding, that's it's kind of context. overwhelming. And yeah. then, um, so I really like the page break because like the letter is a lot shorter, right? Like you, I mean, it's, I think it's 12 pages right now, the framework. And it's like, but not everyone will read everything at the same time. So I think if it's chunks, it's a lot more user friendly. I, yeah, I mean, if this is going to go on the contribute website, eventually, um, I think it would be better to actually have sort of chapter pages. If you follow me, mm -hmm. is to divide this up into sections and have each section be a separate page linked page. Yeah, yeah it makes it easier for people to digest. And it's really a lot better if people are going to refer to it, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody's going to say, 
Um, oh, hey, the contributor framework had something about this. Uh, here's the link to the PR workflow portion. Yeah. And and well, you can do that based on header tags. It's more trouble for people to find the header tags. Yeah. So, so that's what I was trying to do, but I don't know how to do it in uh, GitHub because Charles was saying you cannot create sub pages. Because like uh, you you have like the main overview, right? And then you have the different. So it's like on on a website, it would be the link, and then yeah. you that one page. How it's does just GitHub. Um, what, what are we using for, hold on, are we using Doxy? Are we using something else? That's a very good question. Don't know what that is. Uh, web framework for documentation. I don't, I don't know what we're doing using, Carolyn's not here. Um, let me, hold on, let me take a look at it. Because it depends on what we're using. Um, but but it's also going to live on GitHub, right? Yeah. So I mean, like for a lot of things, you know, what you just do is you just create a document with links to the other documents. You're not you're not doing this as a directory structure necessarily. Okay. So that's what I was. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. That was just what I was saying about GitHub doesn't really have the concept of because I know you and I use Notion a lot and I think that that's maybe where you're you're trying what you're comparing it to is creating a sub page there, and well, so like look, I'm thinking of a regular website too, right? Um, which is, but um, so basically yeah. it would be what uh, Charles was su suggesting. I create a folder in the draft folder and then create separate files. And then link to those pages in the so one is the main one and then the other ones you can link from it. Okay. That's the closest you'll get in mm -hmm. GitHub to to that kind of structure. Well, except we are um we're using Doxy. Okay. And Doxy actually does have a way to make um directory structure reflect in, in sort of document structure. Okay. Cool. Um, the um, um, so that's an option if it's going to be easier for you. Is it DOCSY? I've never used it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Oops. Oh, wow. Somebody apparently did an overhaul to the old contribute site ages ago that was never made live. Okay, we're gonna have to wait for Carolyn on that. Do you want to? Because I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure how she's pulling stuff, so I don't know if if any of that's going to work. Um, but in the meantime, I can use those. Yeah. The full idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. The um. Yes, yeah, so there's a question of whether or not you have to manually link to the stuff in the folders, or whether it automatically displays a table of contents. 
Because the nice thing is with a regular Doxy repo is that I can actually do that where I can just put a TOC tag mm -hmm. and it'll pick up all of the documents in mm -hmm. that particular folder and automatically create a table of contents for them. Yeah. The um, It's just that we're using this thing where it draws from our the SIG contributor strategy repository um, into Doxy and I don't really know how that works because um, Carolyn built it and it's not done yet, so. Or can just ping her on Slack too and ask. Yeah. So yep. I don't have to wait until. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you don't have to wait for a new meeting. No, you have yeah. to wait for her to be. You have to. You have to wait for her to be done repairing a roof. Is is what I'm. I'm talking about waiting for. Oh. Oh. She, I saw something. I didn't. I didn't. So she had like roof yeah. with the whole. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why she's not here. Oh. It so. Sound like fun. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. At least I know whom to ask and what to do. Yeah. What, what I needed from this meeting. That's good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. I mean, that's looking really good. I just put a couple of comments in there about potentially moving some stuff around. Okay. Um, Great. The um and I mean, one of those that I think I'm going to have to tackle as a to do is really looking at the whole, um, more seriously at the whole devising metrics to figure out how you're doing in contributor growth. Is that in dev stats? Except that we don't have a good mapping of here's things you can look at in dev stats. I see. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why we don't have a good mapping. <laughs> which has more to do with a, hey, we're really having trouble defining exactly what it is we want to know. OK. So an aw there's an awful lot of stuff. Speaking as somebody who wrote a bunch of those reports in DevStats, there's an awful lot of stuff in DevStats that was there because it was easy to report on rather than because anyone wanted it. And, and yeah, a lot of a other ton of data there. And a lot of other stuff that's kind of a first a first stab at something like, you know, trying to determine workload by label, right. you know, and I devised that because of some issues we had in Kubernetes and said, okay, this is my first stab at this. Somebody give me some feedback on whether it's working for you. Silence. So, um, which is probably a no, except that we talked about taking it away and then somebody's like, no, I'm using that. So, <laughs> Seems to be the only way I find out if anybody's using metrics. As you discontinue them, you find out who's, who yells at you. That's, I've heard of that happening before, actually. Yeah. It's really funny. But it would be good for us to kind of hash out and talk about, hey, you know, if we assume all the CNCF people have access to dev stats, we have some ability to modify dev stats, can we come up with a short list? Dawn already took a stab at a short list um, in one of the other documents. Of, of sort of things to see how your community is doing. Um, but, you know, she was doing it based on, hey, here's kind of what we have already. Not a, hey, here's what we would like to have because we, we have the ability to change what's there, um, you know, based on what it is we think projects need. Okay. Because um, I was looking there in chaos and I realized you were just referring to the chaos stuff for community for building a community rather than the chaos stuff for their monitoring. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, I kind of gave up playing with the chaos stuff. It was, I, it's, uh, it's unwieldy. I was on the committee and I dropped out because I was looking for like, I'm saying, okay, well, I've already worked on dev stats. I've already worked on Grimoire, right? I know all the stuff I can pull. What I want is the what should I pull? That's what I'm interested in, right? Show me the fewest number of metrics I can get in order to get an accurate picture of what's going on. Um, and that wasn't the direction they were headed. So um, the, um, and, um, you know, cause things like, and I feel like we got a few of those. One of the ones I'm more proud of in dev stats that I feel is underutilized is the um, first time and occasional contributors chart. 
because I feel like, you know, as a sort of end to end test that tells you a lot about how easy it is to contribute to your project. Yeah. Yeah, that's I just had a hard time setting it up, but it was uh Wait, so wait, you were setting it up as opposed to having the Lucas and stuff set it up for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah. Sorry, I wouldn't have recommended that. I would have said file it to <laughs> Lucas, don't just set up an instance. That's we have a whole it. sprawling morass of bash scripts. Um, and go binaries on one gotcha. of the CNCF servers that deploys this. It's not portable code, which is why we have not open sourced any of that stuff, because it's it's horribly full of all kinds of things like um, uh, API keys and stuff belonging to the CNCF. So got it. Um, next time. Yeah. Next next project. Um, <laughs> The um, also the CNCF pays for a bunch of really high octane ARM servers to run all the DevStat stuff. We did as our experiment in running Kubernetes and other things on ARM, um, which worked really surprisingly well. So I'm not familiar with any of those tools that you uh, mentioned. So I guess we should add yeah. here. So um, Charles, can you then help? Um, yeah, so we need, let me add, let me add a, yeah, and also let me, let's see, do we have a natural place? Well, kind of, I was just suggesting, by the way, because you have this thing about, um, um, uh, whatchamacallit, about um, community CRMs, and I feel like that would work better as a subsection around software for community growth, and then we could put metrics in there. Mm -hmm. um, as well as the CRMs. Um, the, um, and so then let me put that down right below that section. Because um, it's weird, because right now you have the CRMs and then you suddenly jump back to a non-software issue. Which yeah, is contributor recruitment tactics. So... Yeah, that was, I wanted to have like a link to Paris's. Yeah. Since this is kind of like really high and really high overview thing, um, I wanted to kind of link to the different other yeah. resources that we have. So it's also linked to the- Wait, what heading level, heading three, there we go. Why am I not? Ugh. Oh, right, because this is pulling from my Red Hat account. Okay, Charles, you'll have to tag yourself on that because I'm getting Red Hat LDAP for all the names. <laughs> okay. I'll do that. The, um... But also the, the other reason to divide it up into files for separate chapters um, like we were saying with the contributor ladder is this means that you could actually start publishing the chapters that are done mm -hmm. sooner. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the latter cha chapters are because it was based on interviews and it was like people were like very giving a lot of information at the beginning and at the end of the interview it was like, okay, people are getting tired. So it was like, oh, should I should have like flipped it around for some and just start with the last question. So, um, yeah. They probably need a little bit more work as it goes uh, gets to the end. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay, I and mean, this looks really nice. I had not looked at it since you started it, honestly. And there is um, a ton of.
stuff. And now I'm really curious. Do you have, so speaking for tuning tracks to like future meetings and stuff, do you have anybody that you talk to with this CRM usage thing that would be willing to like do something at um, a contributor strategy meeting or maintainer circle or something? because I have not actually used CRMs ever for contributor management. And now I'm really curious as to see how people do that. There are two. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. There are two that we're using or evaluating. Um, one is called Orbit and the other is called Savannah. Um, yeah. And I, I like both of them for different reasons. I mean, I'm sure that, I mean, you, you want to have a contributor um, talking about it, right? Because I think they're relatively new. And one of the things that I did is like, I actually um, contacted the, I don't know, founders, whatever, and was like, hey, we're writing this stuff. Um, can you just walk me through it? Like, how did you picture it? Like, what, how, how do you, how do you want us to use this, right? Like, and then and um, they could do that, like a little, I, I don't know if that, it's, it's a vendor of course showing it, but if you have like maybe two, two competitors who get like, cause it's, it's actually really useful and they have a, a lot of really cool things. And I think a lot of people don't know it just because it is relatively new. You have lots of CRM, uh, CR, no, your RMs now, <laughs> but like for traditional, you know, like sales cycle and stuff. And they have a lot yeah. of kind of like the um, community um, metrics in there, which are kind of nice. Um, the, um, yeah, cause well, cause I also want to really get an idea of like somebody who's actually using it on a real project. Um, because... I mean, we're using it and one of okay, the things well, that we're be doing, fun. Uh, yeah. but we're not using it efficiently. And so one of the things that why, uh, I was doing the framework. And so we, we really want to kind of improve the efficiencies and we have a lot of tools and we wanted to make a decision and kind of, uh, we have also a new uh, team member who is going to be looking more at the community stuff. And so at some point we will know more. Um, I think we've been using it a little bit here and there, but not like really, you know, we didn't, since we didn't commit, we're using several things at the same mm -hmm. time. And I think we're not getting the best out of it. So we may be able to talk to one of them maybe in, two months or so right i mean do you feel right charles because I, I don't feel like we really know all the in and in and ins and out yet because we haven't been using it okay. well yeah so what i would see is you could actually kind of do a back-to-back -back, right the vendor could present the thing and then if you could talk about how you were using some pieces of it yeah um it's just because how vendors think that we will use things and and speaking mm -hmm. for a vendor <laughs> How vendors think that people will use things and how people actually use them are often quite different. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I wanted to know is like, wh what was his vision on why did they create things? Because yeah. since, cause there were a lot of things we weren't using probably. So I yeah. wanted to get those nuggets and then like if it's useful and if we're going to, it's a different thing. But yeah, that was yeah. kind of the idea behind yeah. it. I'm, yeah, I'm just curious because it was not right because, you know, I'm more familiar with your standard sales CRM. Yeah. And like, I wouldn't, I would never use Salesforce to manage a community. Um, I know people have tried and they install 800 different Salesforce extensions in order to try to make it work. And they still end up doing a lot of stuff outside the system. Um, so, you know, if, if there's stuff that works a lot better for that, then I would love to know about it. Um, and I think I'm, I would end up not being the only one yeah, I think, people I, think, were interested. I think they do. Um, but if you want, um, I, you know, like uh, in two months or so when we kind of have yeah. learned and we can do the vendor and use it, like right now, yeah. I'm not sure we're ready for that, but I do. And that's why I wanted to have it here because I, I mentioned it uh, and Carlicia was like, what, there are <laughs> CRMs for community? So I was like, okay, a lot of people probably don't know about it. So, I mean, like you don't have to you know, adopt it, but at least know it and evaluate it to see if it if it will work for you. Good. So, which projects are trying these right now? I don't know. Do you know? I know there are several. 
they have several projects, but I I'm not sure which ones are. Okay, because yeah. I well, Chrome crashed on me a while ago and I lost my Savannah tab. And I couldn't remember the name, but now that you brought it up, I remember the name. So I was gonna look into that, and then I was also looking into Orbit, um, and um, I don't know, like the the founder reached out to me probably because I work at Microsoft and like wanted to like see how I was gonna use it. So I don't know if you've already talked to him, um, mm -hmm. but I'm happy to. Yeah, like I'm happy to take some time and explore these two tools because I was going to do that already. Yeah, I mean, like if you want to, if you think there's um, more to add as well, like and one of the things that we wanted to kind of create here is like a little bit best practices, what how to use CRMs in um, uh, an um, open source community kind of a setting. Um, and I think that's kind of important because right now I think like there are a lot of things you remember or there's not a lot of process, right? And that's kind of where you lose a lot of, um, you know, track of things or, um, yeah. So I think like basically what the sales people are doing really well, some of that can actually be translated into, because they've been doing it forever, you know, and very strategically and they have a very strong incentive, right? Which is the sales and the commission. So they're they've really mastered a lot of these things, but I think a lot of the things that I've mastered, we could actually use to better uh, manage our communities. Um, I think, um, I wonder if this is something that like CNCF would help cover for CNCF projects and how that would look like as well, if these things have, you know, substantial costs. I think right now, yeah, they're, they're still trying to figure out what the costs are, but I'm, it's, I think it would be great if the CNCF helped one or both of these projects get off the ground. I know that Savannah was started as a personal project. Um, Orbit, um, I've been chatting with them since like 2019, and I was just listening to a podcast today. They're getting a lot of traction, so I could see them very, very quickly taking off for sure. But yeah, if the CNCF is in a position to facilitate that, I think not only would it help that them, but it would help the projects that get value from their the product from Orbit. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. I think I know what to do. Thanks for your feedback, everyone. And if you have more questions, let me know. I can help. Thank you. This this was very productive for a meeting that started out with no agenda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you know you the spontaneous ones are the best. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.